Rescue operation continue in Cuba following an explosion at the Saratoga Hotel in Havana while the population supports the victims with blood donation. The president of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador, arrived on Friday in El Salvador as part of his international tour of Central America and the Caribbean countries. Two years into an unprecedented economic crisis that ran a mass exodus of massive challenges, graduates, doctors and nurse Lebanese expatriates began casting their votes for parliamentary elections on Friday. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. Nine deaths and four injured in the preliminary balance of an explosion on Friday at the Saratoga Hotel in Havana, Cuba. Local authorities have said a blast was caused by a gas black. Firefighters have cordoned off the area as precautionary measures due to the risk of collapse posed by the damaged building. Rescuers are still searching for possible survivors under the debris and have evacuated neighboring schools and residential, build and residential buildings. Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canel and other governmental officials were at the site right after the explosion and have also visited the injured and hospitals where they are being treated. After the powerful explosion that occurred on Friday at Saratoga Hotel in the Cuban capital, students, organizations, and population in general mobilized to nearly clinic and hospitals to donate blood for the treatment of those injured in the blast. Government authorities refer to all surrounding medical facilities such as Calixto Garcia Hospital and Pediatric Hospital Juan Manuel Marquez have the necessary conditions to attend the wounded. In Havana, rescue efforts continue after the accident, that, uh, the chaos explosion which is through a part of the Saratoga Hotel. Our correspondent, Lisandro Andres, gives us the details. Hello, pleasure to greet you. Right now, I am in the surroundings of the Saratoga Hotel, where a strong explosion occurred this morning, around 11 o'clock in the morning. At this moment, as you can see, they are working in securing and extracting the truck that was transferring gas to this institution and that presumably was the cause, a breakdown, a failure in one of the hoses that provoked this accident. Members of the Red Cross and the fire department at this moment are working to secure the remains of the truck. It is very dangerous, they said. They asked us to move away from the place at the time of the transfer. The evacuation of the remains of the vehicle, because there may be uh, gas still inside, and that is why the uh, high temperatures, the sun at the moment, they're constantly pouring water on the remains of the vehicle to make its extraction as safe as possible. And of course, as you can see, they continue working on securing the infrastructure that was severely damaged. They're also working right now on securing the infrastructure so the members of the search and rescue team and the Red Cross volunteers can enter inside the establishment and continue with the rescue work which is the priority as the authorities have shared up to this moment. Cuban Tourism Minister Juan Carlos Garcia Granda reiterated that the Saratoga Hotel was closed at the time of the explosion and noted that there are no reports of any injured or dead foreign in the blast. So far there is no information that there is any foreigner either injured or dead, but we have to wait. The information we have is very preliminary, and if there are workers, we don't know the number of them yet because of the suddenness of the event. As you can see, they are trying to find them, to evacuate, always with the hope that most of them can still be alive. Are there still workers inside the hotel? Not at this moment. If there were any, they are trapped, and that is what they are looking for. For his part, Cuban Communist Party Secretary in Havana, Luis Antonio Torres, ruled out that the explosion at the Saratoga Hotel might be being a terrorist attack. We're talking about an accident, an accident. We need to investigate what exactly happened, but so far, 
All we know is that it was definitely an accident. It seems a small liquefied gas cylinder exploded. That was it. There's been no attack. The first secretary of the Communist Party in Havana, Luis Antonio Torres Iribar, affirmed that search and rescue efforts are continuing at the Saratoga Hotel after the explosion that destroyed a building. At this moment, the firefighters, the search and rescue groups, the Red Cross, are working hard to get all the information about what may be happening inside and to be able to rescue in the shortest possible time the people who are alive. We already have all the information of people who are alive, who have already been reached by the firefighters. They are being assisted and psychologically prepared for the rescue. And we continue working in the rubble, which has to be a slow process because under the debris, there may be people still alive. Havana's first secretary of communist party finally stressed that the Cuban state is committed to resolving a and facing the situation generated in the capital city by the Toga Hotel explosion. All the institutions are present here, including the President of the Republic and First Secretary Miguel Diaz Canel, as well as the First Minister Comrade Marrero, Comrade Esteban Lasso, and provincial and municipal authorities. We are here devoted to solving and facing this emergency. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro expressed his solidarity with the Cuban people and government after the explosion at the Saratoga Hotel in Havana. The President posted on Twitter the following message. I express my solidarity with the Cuban people and President Miguel Díaz-Canel for the unfortunate accident that occurred at the Saratoga Hotel in Havana. Our heartfelt support to the families of the victims. We wish a speedy recovery of the injured. Cuba, we are with you. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back. The president of Mexico, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, arrived on Friday in the Republic of El Salvador as part of his international tour of Central American and Caribbean countries. After his arrival in San Salvador, the Mexican president proposed to address the migratory issue by generating opportunities, criticized the United States for its lack of support. López Obrador announced that Mexico and El Salvador would double resources the social program of young people building the future and so in life to achieve a granted courage in the country governed by Bukele. Both presidents agreed that the migration problem must be resolved with the help of Latin American governments. With several attacks and armed strike imposed by an military group known as Gulf Clan continues in Colombia following the extradition of its leader, better known as Otoniel, to the U.S. So far reported incidents include a set of ablasts of these 50 vehicles in a strategic corridor, such as the road from Medellin to Caribbean coast. It was also reported that a group of employees of mining companies were detained for their way to Nechi in the Bajo Cauca subregion sub of the Department of Antioquia. On the other hand, in the Department of Cordoba, Sucre, and the south of Bolivar, mass businesses, companies, and educational institutions are closed due to the trend from the criminal group. In this context, social organizations and human rights defenders announced the, ab the absence of law and first many in the municipalities affected by these events. Former President of Brazil, Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva, will launch his presidential candidacy in Sao Paulo together with his running mate, Geraldo Admin, head of October elections. In statements to the press, Lula da Silva warned that the October elections will be one of a polarization of while he called on the people not to be afraid in its common trend since in recent elections process. In this context, Lula committed to listen and dialogue with all social sectors as well as in the overturn the neoliberal policies imposed by Bolsonaro's administration which dismantled the social programs promoted by the Workers' Party. According to opinion polls, Lula da Silva leads the voting intentions with 43.3% ahead of its main opponent, current president Jair Bolsonaro.
In Spain, at least two dead and 18 injured in an explosion in a building in Salamanca, neighboring of the capital, Madrid. The explosion was caused by a gas light that they said that they said were two plumbers of Honduran and Spanish nationality who went down to the basement of the building to try to shut off the gas supply after noticing the light due to the smell. The mayor of Madrid, José Luis Martín Almeida, confirmed the number of victims and explained that the incident left 17 slightly injured and another seriously injured. An 84-year-old citizen who was admitted to a hospital in the city intensive care union after suffering polytraumatism. The local authorities informed that the security forces and firefighters continue to search, rescue and the removal work at the site of the incident. On Friday, Northern Ireland decided its future during the historic election that could spell the end of unionism, hegemony, and nationalism to govern of Sinn Féin. During the elections, more than 1.3 million voters went to polls. These elections comprise 146 of more than 300 English municipal councils, 32 councils in Scotland and 22 in Wales, plus the 90 seats in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Reportedly, these elections resulted in the defeat of the ruling party of the three London Borough. Meanwhile, the Labour Party, which was put inside from the political sense since 2010, won the Wales, Burnet and the Westminster. These elections can be taken as an indicator of public opinion ahead of the next national election, which will be held before 2024. The Russian government announced before the United Nations that Western powers are wanting a world economic war against the country. This statement was made by the representative of Russia to the United Nations, Vasil Nembesia, during the meeting held on Thursday at the UN Security Council to analyze the situation in Ukraine. The diplomat warned, in addition to the imposition of sanctions and the seizure of Russian citizens' property, the country's bank accounts were frozen. The total amount of which amounts the 300 billion US dollars. Nembencia added that this policy of Western powers violates international law and represents the, the thief of the Russian people's resources. The diplomat also reiterated NATO uses Ukraine to promote confrontations with Moscow. Russian Foreign Ministry start, stated on Friday that Russia does not intend to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. We have to stay ready for any development of events, both in the media field and directly on the ground. We have repeatedly had to refute insinuations about Russia's possible use of nuclear weapons during the special military operation in Ukraine. This is a deliberate lie. Russia firmly adheres to the principle that there can be no winners in a nuclear war and it must not be unleashed. There are new developments at the Astual metallurgical plant in the Ukrainian city of Mariupol. What the Russian Defense Ministry and the Donetsk militia try to establish human corridors to evacuate civilians. Nationalists and mercenaries are holding them hostage, damaging food and water to freedom. According to the United Nations Security Secretary General Antonio Guterres, a third option to evacuate civilians is underway. However, nothing is being said about the 15 people used by the Ukrainian nationalists of bargaining ship, the method previously used in Syria when, when they sh terrorists executed civilians if their demands were unheard is the response of the Pronazi to Russian proposal to surrender with full respect to the Geneva Accords and under the protection of the United Nations and the International Red Cross. Two weeks ago, Moscow claimed that the intercept calls to Kiev. The mercenaries proposed their surrender, but they then they threatened to kill if they did so.
Iraqi Health Minister Rapuro, one person has died and more than 5,000 have been treated in hospital on Thursday for respiratory ailments due to the sandstorm, the seventh in month. This Thursday, 18 provinces, including Baghdad and the vast western region of Alp Narn, awoke once again to trick cloud of dust blanketing the sky. Those storms have increased dramatically in the frequency in Iraq, in Iraq in recent years. People hit harder are those suffering from chronic respiratory illness like asthma and they are deadly suffering from her ailments. Dust and sand storms have always occurred in the Middle East, but they have grown more frequent and intense in recent years, a trend that has been associated with the overuse of river water, more dams, overgrazing, and deforestation. Sandstorms storms also cause economic damage, reducing visibility to sometimes near zero, means shutting down airports and highways, plus the damage caused to buildings, vegetation, and solar plants. Oh, we have more news coming up after a final short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. Two years into an unprecedented economic crisis, that's ran a mass exodus of mostly challenged colleges, graduates, doctors, and nurses. The Benedict's expatriated began casting their votes for preliminary elections this Friday. It's the second time in the country history that citizens residing in abroad, some 225,000 people, are able to vote for the 128 representative in elections said to be held and at home on May 15. This will be the first election held since protesters massively took to the streets in 2019 against the country's entrenched ruling LED Watley, blaming for the economic collapse. After voting, its official will ship the ballots boxes through our private companies to Lebanon Central Bank. Those votes will be counted after May 15. The opposition has pinned their hopes to the Diaspora, however, experts said elections are expected to uphold the status quo despite years of economic meltdown. As you all know, the first voting poll opened at 17.30 in the Islamic Republic of Iran, and just a little while ago, the voting poll was opened in Cairo in the Arab Republic of Egypt. The process is going smoothly and democratically, without any problems. If any violations are to take place, the monitoring team at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the European Union Election Observation Supervising Team, or the Election Observation Missions will address the contravention immediately, along with the head of the center, the chief of mission, or the consul general. Final preparations are underway ahead of the May 8 elections in the Philippines, which will decide who succeeds President Rodrigo Duarte. Filipinos head of the pools on Maine to elect a new president, a vice president, and half of the 24 seat Senate among national polls. Voters will also get to choose among candidates for more than 18,000 local positions, including provisional governors, town mayors, and a House of Representatives seats. Current vice president, Lenny Robredo, and former senator, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., Son of name shade of the outset, Dictor Arsen, are seen as the top two contenders in the 10 away presidential race. The latest survive by Pulse Asia released early this week, showing Marcos Jr. top the polls with 56% support, and Roberto ranked second with 23%. More than 65 million Philippines have registered to vote in the countries and another 1.8 million overseas. The Association of South Asian Nations had convened a meeting Friday in the Cambodia capital, Phnom Penh, in a fresh effort to organize humanitarian assistance for Myanmar. Organizers said a meeting, which includes participation of a video conference, was attended by a high level representative from Myanmar and other nine members of the state of Asia. And its external 
partners, United Nations Specialist Agents, Agencies and other relevant international organizations. Therefore, if we are off an attempt to revive a five-point consensus of Myanmar reached in April last year. The consensus called for a mediation cessation of violence and dialogue among the concerned parties, mediation by an Asian special envoy, provision of humanitarian aid through Asian channels, and a visit to Myanmar by a special convoy to meet all concerned parties. No more agreed to the consensus, but they made scan efforts to implement it. Sri Lanka police used tear gas and water cannon on Friday to disperse protesters demonstrating over the country's economic crisis. Shops, offices, and schools closed across the country on Friday, and transport came to one nearest stand still in widespread demonstrations against the government. Factories, banks and government offices were also closed with employees demonstrating in front of them. The Indian Ocean Island nation is on the brink of bankruptcy and was suspended payment of its foreign lands. Its economic woe was brought on a political crisis with the government facing protests and a confidence motion in parliament. Protesters have also been occupied in the entrance of the president's office in the capital of Colombo for 28 days, demanding Prime Minister Raya Pasca to resign. At least 80 soldiers, members of the Burkina Faso security forces, including two volunteers required by the authorities to exercise combat capabilities against terrorists were killed in an attack on Thursday in the north and north central region of the country. Five soldiers died after an ambush of the patrol near the north central town of Pelisa, while another soldiers and two other volunteers were victims of an ambush which occurred in the village Tubu, North Jersey. The escalation of violence has worsened after the military junta sized power following the coup against the then president, Rochumar Christian Cabore, in 2015. Striking miners at South Africa's second largest gold producer, Sibine and Stillwater, say they are extending their stride until they get up a rise. Thousands of workers have been amending $63, which is about a thousand rands a month, leading increase in two months. The Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union and the National Union of Miners, which presents nearly 30,000 employees, declared a strike on March 9 after negotiations with the mining group's management failed. Miner last week, both presidents were Ramaphosa out of the May Day celebration, who had to cut short his speech and evacuate out the scene, let it acknowledge a loss of confidence among the middle class. Workers have not been paid since March 9 and have lost about $63 million in wages. Well, we have come to the end of this news brief. But you can find this and many other stories on our website at teleseringlish.net. You can also join us on our socials, we're on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English and from the South, I'm Ana Marrero and thank you for watching.